Okay guys, so this is part 5 of the heat sensing series. This is my Wednesday ER and I will be showing you how to multiplex with the Arduino and 6 LN35DZ temperature sensors. So if this is the first video you're watching, you should probably click here to watch my first one because they go in stages. Uh, also, you should take a look at the data sheet I posted on my blog for the CD4067B, which is the multiplexer we're using. Uh, the link to my blog is in the description, or the URL is right here. So either type this in, or click the link in my description to look at the data sheet. So the two things we had to change to incorporate multiplexing into the project was the Arduino code and the breadboard style. So first we'll look at the Arduino code. As you can see we have two new ints. We have sensor pin and address pins. Sensor pin is letting it know that we are only reading A0 on the Arduino. Because we're multiplexing there's no need to read other analog pins unless you have two or three multiplexers going at once. The address pins are the four digital pins you need on your Arduino to run this multiplexer. So I'm using two, three, four, and five of the digital pins. Uh, what those do is, depending on what sensor you're wanting to read, they will either be on or off, and they will tell the multiplexer what to give a zero. So if we wanted to read sensor zero, the uh, address pins would show up zero 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 zero, and then analog read, so a zero would read that sensor zero. That's probably a little complicated because there's a lot of zeros, but that is uh, basically what it's doing. This stayed the same. And this, as I said before, it's selecting the sensors to read. So now I'll give you a look at uh, the breadboard layout that I built to incorporate the multiplexer in this. There is a fritzing diagram on my blog. However, I'm using a single breadboard on there, so it's a bit different than what I'm going to show you now. If you only have a single breadboard, uh, looking at my fritzing diagram would probably be better but if you have access to a triple, then I would recommend doing it this way, just because there's less crossing of wires. So I'll show you my breadboard, and then after that, I'll give you a look at my processing code, because I did change some things, but they didn't have to do with the multiplexer. So here's my breadboard. Okay, guys, so like I said before, uh, the sort of the main change from Multi, from not multiplexing to multiplexing is obviously the breadboard. So here's a look on my breadboard. This is what it looks like. Um, as you can see, this is the multiplexer here. I still have my six uh, LM35DZs. And I'm still pulling the positive and negative charge from the, from the bars here. And I'm just pulling them to where I need them with the wires. So what you need for this is your CD4067B multiplexer and you need to have a pin A0, a ground, a power, and four digital pins free to use the multiplexer for this. So with the multiplexer I'm feeding the common in-out pin to A0, which is here. Uh, if you're using the same multiplexer, the common A, a in-out pin uh, has a little dot in the corner right there. So that's your in-out. Uh, and then you need two grounds and one power to power your multiplexer. So the one power is this blue wire here. Pin 15 on the multiplexer, which is here, is a ground, the blue wire, and also this ground here is what you need. 
The digital pins go to A, B, C, and D on your multiplexer. So we have digital pin 2 going to A, 3 going to B, 4 going to C, and 5 going to D. Uh, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, it's probably best that you look at the data sheet I posted on my blog. So that's basically it. And then you have your uh, analog reads here from your LM35DZs over here. And you feed those into your multiplexer. So that's the hardware change of it. Uh, again, it's not too, too big of a change, but it's still fairly large. So now we'll go back and we'll take a look at my processing code. Okay guys, so I hope looking at my breadboard helped. And like I said, now we'll take a look at my processing code. So this is what my processing outcome looks like uh, right now. As you can see, uh, I was touching the purple sensor. So with the multiplexer, it, uh, it still all works and it reads quite nicely. The only thing we changed was the to display the average up in the top here of all the sensors. So this black line was the average of all the sensors, but now we showed the exact temperature of it. Uh, to do that, we put in two new floats, uh, temp C average and temp F average. And then down here, this is where we're displaying the word temperature and the average. So this is where the word temperature is located, and this is where the word average is located. Down here a little bit, this is where we are updating the temperature of Celsius and Fahrenheit. So as you can see, we're filling it with 205, which is the gray background and we're creating a rectangle. So these two are the points where it's located, and this is how big the rectangle is. And then here we are making the stroke weight, stroke weight of the letters zero, and we're filling the letters with black. We're lining the text to the left, and we're giving it a font 24. This is how we find the uh, Celsius average and the Fahrenheit average. So we're putting the letter C, and this is where it is located for the Celsius average. And because everything is in Celsius, we don't need to do any conversion. But because we, we're also displaying a Fahrenheit, we need to have a little conversion here. So we're multiplying the Celsius by 9 and then dividing it by 5, and we're adding 32 onto it. And then we're displaying that. Uh, basically right underneath the Celsius because the processing graph goes from 1 and 1 in the top left corner to you know 799 799 in the bottom right corner so it's different than the regular Cartesian plane we are used to so that is all the change in processing I'll run it one more time so you guys can look at it and while this is running, uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, all the five videos and the five blog posts of the heat sensing series. I hope you continue watching them after the Christmas break. I don't know if it'll be uh, more heat sensing uh, sort of projects, but it will still be gathering data and displaying it and processing. Also, make sure to head over to my blog to look at the data sheets, the fritzing, the fritzing image, and I also have an animated GIF on the uh, output of this if you don't want to rewatch the video to see this. So, I hope you have a great Christmas, and I will see you after that. Alright, take care.